I want to give a big, big, big old shout out to Famous Me, Fatty Ma, F. Brett Netzer, AJ He, Surreal Spill, Navy, Darth O.B., Don Coleon, Jamal Weeks, Fat Boy 100, Shane Gibson, Carl Worthington, Caleb Sims, Alice F.R., Gino Johnson, Jaden Dorsey, Jerome Charles, Clamps, Easy, BS, Two Way, B9, 203, and Orlando Dumas. Big shout out to y'all. Appreciate y'all being part of that Feezy family. Let's get straight to it. <laughs> So yeah, man, when I was finna drop the other day, I didn't know my big brother was getting out. I didn't know the day he was getting out. And then my mama hit me up cause she had to be at work and she asked me, could I go pick him up? So that's why I didn't drop yesterday cause I had to go pick my brother up. And then today when I woke up, you know, he, this is his first day out. So he want to go over here, go over here, go do this, go get that. So I kind of was just running him around a little bit. I'm about to tell y'all about that boy, Joe Dirt. A lot of people, a whole lot of times I know is wondering this thing that I'm about to speak on today. And I think I slightly spoke on it um, a little bit, maybe with different um, groups or something, but I know for a fact it's something that I never went too, 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 too deep into, but we're going to go a little more into it today. How are situations with um, white people in prison that is a part of black gangs? And you got a lot of people that I see in different states saying white people are a part of black gangs or white people are not a part of black gangs. So I'm going to tell y'all a little something, something. So I transfer, I just get down to the prison, level five prison, violent prison. So I'm standing there on the, um, like right outside of the ID, which sometimes when I say intake, intake and ID is the same thing. It's just, it says ID on our side of it. Like, I guess it's short for, it says ID on our side of it, but once you get inside, it says intake. So if you ever hear me say intake or ID, I'm talking about the exact same thing. I'm standing outside the ID area. It's a group of us that just got down there. So we can't just leave and go to the dorm by ourselves. We got to wait for some of the staff, some of the cert members to put our stuff in the cart and then they escort us down there. Because I told y'all, sometimes, depending on what prison you at, if you just go in the dorm, they try to check the temperature first to see like, do it seem like you got issues with somebody in this dorm or something like that. I'm standing outside there, I'm waiting on them. So the people on the inside like, don't go nowhere, don't go too far. I'm like, no, nah, I ain't going nowhere. So it's a few of us just standing out there. You know, we're just looking around the prisons, people walking, we see dorms going to child. Cause it probably was about 5 p.m. when they fully got us processed and stuff. Cause you gotta go through a whole lot of stuff when you first get down there. We standing outside, man, this prison is wide open. Like you got all kind of people walking up and just walking past like freely. Like at other prisons, you know, it'd be more structure, more order. This is a Ware State prison. And, you know, they just walking up, walking all kind of ways or whatever. So I see now this prison is a little more loose. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't really kind of don't give a damn for real. You know what I'm saying? You got a group of three walking up and then behind them is a white guy and he's walking up. So, you know, I kind of tighten up. I'm looking at them. They looking at me. They looking at the dude standing over here. Just trying to see if they know each other. Clearly don't nobody know each other. So when this group comes up, one of the dudes said, he said something like some type of blood stuff. And you know, I told y'all before, if you make it to the dorm, they standing at the door throwing up gang signs and saying whatever. But you got some people that at a prison like this, that's wide open. They will walk up to the intake area if you come outside and they just come to see who you is. So the dude looked at me, he threw up some type of sign and said something. I instantly identified him as a blood. So when he said that, I didn't respond. I didn't say nothing. So that let him know that, you know, I'm not affiliated with that. So, you know, he went to looking at them saying whatever they were saying. And then the white guy come and walking up and he said, where those GDs at? When he said it, now I've seen white GDs before. I have, but you know, I don't know, I guess... The prison I'm at and, you know, you got a lot of people here who be on other type of stuff or whatever. So I'm just like, when he said it, I didn't say nothing at first because I don't know, bro. It, it usually don't be that way. Like even the places where I've seen white GDs, 
they usually ain't pulling up at the door. Hey, what's up? You know, like stuff like that. They're more so somebody else come greet you and then eventually you learn about this individual. You know, stuff happens at level five prisons like this. Left and right, back to back. Stuff happens and you may never know that something just went down. So, you know, it's just something about the way he said, you know what I'm saying? Where those GDs at and the way he was looking, he had tattoos on his face and stuff. It just kind of made me wonder, like, is there something going on? And you really with this group of three and y'all just, they just used you to try to trick somebody into saying something so y'all can start busting them with the candy bar. So, you know, I look over at the three and it's like, they not paying him no attention. They not studying nothing he talking about. So then I'm like, nah, it ain't nothing like that. And then I'm like, damn, well, even if it is, bro, you know what you signed up for, bro. Because there's on some stuff like, you know, if you don't say nothing and then later on, people learn who you is. And then they're like, yeah, when they pulled up at first, he ain't even say nothing. Then it's just, it's just a bad look, bro. Prison, the prison politics is so stupid, bro. And the people in there, it's like the only thing that's that, that you know, everybody is up on is violence stupidity, just dumb stuff, bro. That's why I tell y'all, stay out of it. So I'm just like, I braced myself, and I was like, hey, if it is anything funny, bro, it is what it is. That's the situation I put myself into. So I didn't say nothing at first, so he went to looking at those guys. So I said something back, and you know what I said is letting somebody know that you know we're the same thing. So he looked over at me, he came, he did a little handshake, and he was like, what's your name, folks? I was like, C. Bill. What's your name? I don't know, bro. It seemed like he was a little extra. I think that's what it was. It's just, I don't know. So I'm like, CB, what's your name? And he was like, Joe Dirt. I'm like, Joe Dirt? The fizzy pee. <laughs> no, and they finally come out. He's walking with me. They, we pushing the cart to the dorm. We finally get down there to the dorm. So as soon as we get to the dorm, clearly he's been here. So he know these people or whatever. He ran up to the window. Do, 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 do. He went to hitting on the window. Some people came and he went to telling them somebody, we got one new coming in and stuff like that. So I, I actually bumped into another dude that I knew from another prison. So it was cool anyway. But Joe Dirt, he did the, the introduction or whatever. He let me know. Whatever. So he told me he was in the same dorm. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. He like, but he about to hit the walk and go handle something. He was like, but I'm going to holler at you later. I'm in the same dorm. So I'm like, all right, bet. So I come in the dorm. You know, I go holler at the guys, put my stuff down or whatever. It was two people in the dorm. It was, it was a dude. Was I at Smith with T? Y'all know T. I did an interview with T. T was in that dorm. And there was another dude in that dorm that I was in um, I was at Smith with. So as soon as I walked in, when I'm walking across the floor, I hear CB. So I look up. He like, damn, what's up, bro? So I'm like, damn, what's up? You know what I'm saying? He's different group. You know, he runs with a different group of people, but it still felt good seeing him and stuff. But they introduced me to this guy named Blackjack. Blackjack is the one that runs the show, as far as my guys. But old school. Well, he wasn't old school. I be saying old school, man, for people who be 43. He wasn't really that old, bro. I got to stop saying that. He was he was like in his early 40s. He was a slim guy. He had a, uh, a cock eye. Like, one of his eyes was straight. You know, the other one. Kind of wander off a little bit. He seemed straight. He called me in the room. They hollered at me. They asked all the appropriate questions or whatever. And we, we started kicking it and stuff like that. He was asking me who is the first person that I talked to or whatever, like down here as far as the guy. So I was like, I think his name was uh Joe Dirt. He talked like he mumbling almost. He like, Joe Dirt. Joe Dirt. Like, I don't know. It was something strange about it. His damn mouth didn't open all the way. I don't know what it was, but it was something like that. So one of the other guys was like, man, you know, Joe Dirt, the white boy. So he was like, oh, Joe, damn, Joe Dirt, damn, Joe Dirt. I'm wondering about that. Even though it's something that was just brushed off, I'm curious to know what does all that mean? Because this is one of your brothers. You know what I'm saying? Now, from my experience of somebody thinking about a person and then they remember who it is and then they're like, man, that kind of means like, man, that person ain't talking about nothing. Or we ain't really dealing with that person. That's really what that means when a person do that. For real, for real. Joe Dirt, he's super country, bro. He like, I think he was fresh from, um, Joe Dirt was fresh from Tennessee. He said he was in Georgia for two weeks and got locked up. So that's why he sounds so country and talks so country. And at this time, he had been locked up for like a year. So that, that 
you know, that, that accent is still fresh on him and stuff. But he said he had been locked up for like a year. And the prison that we're at now, he had been down here for like six months. And he was somewhere else before the end. Me and Joe Dirt, I ain't going to just say we just became the coolest in the world. Because, you know, he used to do the cream, which he wasn't supposed to be doing. And he used to smoke the strips. And I told y'all strips is just a little piece of paper that got some type of chemical on it. Which he wasn't supposed to be doing. But... You know, he, he kind of became like my go-to guy. Like, anything I needed to know, anything I needed to know about anything like that. Joe Dirt was the one that I could go ask without worrying about. You know, some people be catching attitudes with you because you asking the damn question. Some people be acting funny, all kind of little stuff. So Joe Dirt is the person that I could kind of go to. I'm like, hey, Joe Dirt, so who the hell the barber? Or who do this? Or what days can we go to the library? Or whatever. Like, he was just the person that's going to give me answers every time. So, ultimately, we, you know, we got a little cool. And then he's one of the guys at the same time. So, it's like, you know, whatever. So, Blackjack wasn't really, he wasn't really the type of guy that I would probably kick it with every day. It was just, I don't know. He used to always have some stuff to say about people. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't like that. It used to be people that, would be right here in his face and everything would be A1 and then this person would walk up here but man, I don't know what that was. And it's like, damn, Blackjack, why you, like, I don't know. I just don't like that type of stuff. That stuff fake, bro. That's that's stuff that I like to tell people like, bro, live, have some type of morals, have some principles, you know, with the way you live your life. So, you know, if, if I feel some type of way about you, I don't want to rock with you, I'm not about to be sitting there kicking it, chopping it up with you every day, bro. Unless... Unless I feel like you up to something flaky and I'm trying to catch it. So I need your energy around me just so I can make sure I ain't tripping. That's the only scenario where I probably would be doing that. But if I don't like you and I got something negative to say about you all the time, I'm just going to stay away from you. And I felt like he do this around me. I'm new to this prison. So you talking about these people who've been here with you. So you probably talk about me to some of them too. That's how I'm thinking. So Blackjack, I kind of stay out the way. You know, he got a whole lot of motion going on. So, you know, sometimes I need to holler at him there. About the phone, when I was looking for a phone to buy. If I wanted to get me a Chris Brown CD or whatever, I had to tap in with Blackjack. So, but he wasn't really my type of guy. You know what I'm saying? I know one day I'll never forget. They was passing out the incentive boxes. They was giving us three slices a piece of each inmate. So... I get it. Like, you got to come in the front of the dorm. Everybody got to step outside the dorm. Then they pull the cart right in front of the dorm, leaving just enough space for you to walk back into the dorm. And then you got, like, two security. And then you got one inmate helping them do it. So it's like you walk up, they hand you one, then you walk in the dorm. And then the next person is the same way. So they did that. So I'm coming back in. I was kind of the last in line. I hear Joe Dirt saying, got me thug. Come on, man. You got me the Blackjack, don't try me like that. When I look over at Blackjack, Blackjack, like in the, almost in the corner, close to where my room was at. My room was all the way, like when you first walk in the dorm, upstairs, all the way in the corner to the left. That was my room. Blackjack was like, one, two, two, the second room over from me, Blackjack room, but they was kind of like right down there, but Joe, Blackjack right here, Joe Dirt was like walking back down this way, but he was, you know what I'm saying, screaming and talking. Now, at this point, I had only been at this prison for about a month, and this is what I experienced. Don't nobody talk to Blackjack like that. Now, you know, in the back of my mind, I felt like Blackjack was a little lame, and he did some lame things, but I can't, I mean, I can't take it away from him. He did have a position, and he was respected, and from my experience of being there, people mumbled behind his back. I never really heard nobody say stuff like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? To Blackjack or whatever. So, first thing I do, I'm finna go up here because these two, you know, these two brothers and it's like, why is y'all guys woo -doo -doo? So, Blackjack sitting there smiling, he mumbling something, saying something. Then he stepped back in the room and he started doing like this. You know what I'm saying? So, about four or five of us shoot up the steps, go in the room with Blackjack. Some other guys, it seemed like they went over there with Joe Dirt. So, Blackjack like, Man, listen, fam. Look, they were going on. They were going on. That man is not official. That man is not GD. That man was a crip at another camp. Everybody confused, like, what? He was a crip at another camp. So I guess that's what they was just arguing about or whatever the case was. So we're like, what the hell, y'all? If he was a crip at another camp, why you didn't address that 
this is what I'm saying in my mind. And this, this was not looking right to me because there's other guys in here who's just kind of eating it up, just riding nuts, just going along. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, big folks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, big folks. Oh, yeah. But it's on some stuff like, if that's the case, y'all should be questioning Blackjack off the dribble because if you knew this and you're in position where you're supposed to deal with all these, why you ain't been dealt with that when folks came in here? Why has he been in here six months and you've been going along with everything? You know what I'm saying? Like, why Why you ain't addressed that then? You know what I'm saying? So he like, the man had called his auntie and he had his auntie sent me some money when he first came in here. You know what I'm saying? So she be sending me bread every month and stuff like that. I just be sparing them, letting them, you know what I'm saying? But he had like, he ain't finna send me that money or something. And he ain't even going you know, get him up out of here. You know what I'm saying? These other guys seem like they with it. But my thing is this. I'm not with that, bro. Because when I decided to become what I became, I took it serious, bro. I'm not the type of person where you can just have me do some goofy stuff. I real life stand on certain morals and principles in this lifetime. So you telling me you, this month I've been here, you done had my life in jeopardy. However long these guys been here, at least for the past six months, you telling me you had some guys life in jeopardy. And if y'all wonder how the hell he got y'all life in jeopardy, because if you telling me this guy was something else, and he's not really what he's saying he is. I done gave this guy my love and my loyalty looking at him as a brother. And if something happens to him, I'm willing to slide with him, putting my, my freedom on the line, putting my life on the line, all because you getting some money every month from his auntie. You know what I'm saying? But Joe Dirt got some gang type of tattoos on his face. So that's what's making me think. I'm thinking in the back of my mind, like, it kind of can't be true because if this man knew he was something else, why the hell would he go tap this on his face? But that's not a, a, a just factor and means the most in the world because I have seen it before. They asking him, like, what's up, bro? What you want us to do? What you want us to do? So he like, hold on, I'm going to just holler at him again. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just see what he talking about. But if he ain't trying to pay me that money, he going to have to get up out of here or whatever the case is. When we walking out the room, i never forget it. I heard Black Jack say, like, no, they don't white, but no way. Oh, right, no doubt. White boy, white boy making all that noise. Come on, man. White boy can't beat me in nothing. White, 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 white boy can't beat me in nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it makes me think: Do Black Jack got some type of racism issues he got going on? Like, like for real? You real life got some people like that? That especially, I'm about to tell you. I'm gonna be all the way one K with y'all. I'm not gonna say too much, but I will say this: From my experience. Meeting GDs and Muslims in prison. I have met a lot of each that, you know, like treat the white people that's a part of whatever they are a little differently and feel like, like man, watch out. You man, watch out. Stuff like that. So it just had me thinking. I fall out the room. One of them fall out with me. I'm like, uh, what you think about that, bro? He like, man, I don't even sound right. But he was just one of the guys like, what's up, bro? What you want to do? So I'm like, I'm looking at him like, man, what the hell they got going on? Because you telling me it don't sound right, but you was just asking him what you want me to do. He was like, man, Blackjack be tripping sometimes, man. Blackjack be tripping sometimes. So me and bro pushed down here to Joe Dirt. They had him in the room. It was some other guys in there getting his side of the story. So we go in there. We asked Joe Dirt, like, what the hell going on, folks? You know, we just playing along. So he like, damn man gonna ask me for my damn pizza, G? Hey, come on, G. Man gonna tell me he's the only reason I'm in the dorm and I'm white and I can't be GD for real. Man, come on, man. Don't try me like that, bruh. Man mad because I won't give him my damn pizza, G. Really, I can't say I don't believe it. I don't want to believe it because bruh, there's some things in the prison that goes on there. If I told y'all, y'all probably be like, Bill, you lying. I done told y'all some things, and I done seen the comments like, Bill, you lying. Ain't nobody did that. Or I love your stories, but I just think this one cap. Yeah, I know. Hold on. But I thought I seen something crawling. I done seen plenty of comments. I love your stories, Bill. This a good story, but I think it's cap. Yeah, you think it's cap because you never been to that side of the world. This is a world within a world. So there's some things people do and say 
that that would probably be unbelievable. It's it would not surprise me if it was one hundred percent true that Blackjack basically tried to take the man pizza and he didn't give it to him and then he just told us this whole lie. I've seen stuff like that before, bro. About simpler stuff. We tell him Joe Dirt like, bro, just leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So it seemed like it kind of died out. Later on that day, I noticed Blackjack called Joe Dirt in the room. Joe Dirt went in there. He talked to him for a minute. He came out. Wasn't no issues or nothing like that. I'm sitting there in the day room one day, chill. I'm just thinking about it. Now I ain't gonna lie. This group of guys, this batch of guys got me uneasy because I'm getting fake vibes. I'm getting vibes like people is using the name of this organization uh, for the use of, you know, doing stuff like just mishandling people. And I, I don't like the way that feels. So I'm sitting here thinking about it. And I was already feeling from the last camp because all kind of stuff I went through, I was already feeling like, bro, I'm about to get ready and go home. I'm about to go get my life together with the most high. I'm about to get right with my son. I'm about to get my money right. I'm not about to be on no stupid gang stuff, bro. Anything, anybody trying to talk to me about or trying to get me to engage in, if it's not positive and productive, if it's not involving the most high, if it's not involving helping somebody, I'm not doing it. I'm real life about to fall back. That's what I was thinking. I was already been thinking that, but now it got me thinking it even more. Joe Dirt coming there. He go to talking to me. He go to telling me about Blackjack and stuff. He like, yeah, man. But he looking through the door. He trying to keep looking because he don't want nobody to walk up while he talking. So he talking. He like, yeah, man. I'm going to tell you something. Blackjack? Blackjack's racist, bro. He's racist. I'm like, why the hell you he say that? He like, man, Blackjack's racist, man. Blackjack's a racist. He don't like white boys. I know it. I can see it in his eyes, man. Blackjack and racist, man. I'm the only one Blackjack ever tries like that. I'm going to knock his ass out one day, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm really thinking in a sense like, boy, Blackjack going to whoop your ass. And then even if he don't whoop your ass, he got these guys brainwashed. And it's like at this moment, my word don't really mean much. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm just, I'm just another guy. Like I can say something. My input means something. But seeing how many other people will agree with blackjack on situations, my word won't really mean much one word against a whole bunch of brainwash words. So I'm just thinking like, damn, why is Joe Dirt? That's how much long you got, Joe Dirt. He said, I got live, bro. I got live. I'm just like, damn, you in this place for life. You know what I'm saying? So you just go talk to him about all kind of stuff. It's about three, four days went by. Somebody went knocking on the door. I'm like, yo. Like, Joe Dirt, like, come on, bro. He come in the room. Joe Dirt has started showing his comical side. You know what I'm saying? Like, he made a few bald head jokes or whatever could the case is. You know, I kind of joke back with him a little bit. We just ain't going to go too far. We ain't going to play no F games. We ain't going to do no wrestling and touching and slap boxing. We ain't going to do none of that. But I'll make a joke or two here and there with you. You know what I'm saying? And Joe Dirt was skinny, bro. I told you he had a few tattoos on his face. And he had the little hair where... Like, whenever he'll grow it out, it'll kind of be with the bang, and then that's when people will make jokes about him, and then he'll always cut it low. And then the prison usually be tripping about him cutting it low. But I know, I'm in there laying down in the bed, he come in there. Man, get your Morris chestnut looking ass up. So I lean up, I'm laughing, I think it's so funny, because to me, he looks so damn stupid. So I'm like, man, yo, get your Jim Carrey looking ass out my room. <laughs> he like, folk, I can open your box, folk. So I'm like, for what? He like, so I'm like, go ahead, do your thing. Ain't go in his pockets or something, man. Joe Dirt pull out a big ass bomb of Chris Brown CDs. I had just got my first phone at Ware State Prison. Matter of fact, he pulled a big ass bomb of Chris Brown CDs out. I had bought some from the next dorm. I was waiting on them to come in. So I was really happy. I, jumped, I was already leaning up. But when I seen that, I jumped up. I'm like, Joe Dirt, the hell you got going on? What the hell right there, man? He like, Chris Brown. So he pulled it out. He done threw me a nice little scoop. A scoop cost $50. He just threw it to me on the strip. He was like, I'm blessing all the brothers. I'm blessing all my brothers. So I'm like, all right, I appreciate that, my boy. Don't went around, hit off everybody. Joe Dirt didn't know I got the phone that day. I, You know, I kind of kept it on the low a little bit. Joe Dirt come in the room about three, four hours later, asked me, do I need to use the phone? Man, I pulled the phone out. I'm like, Joe Dirt, what the hell you got going on, folks? You done robbed somebody or something? I'm just playing. I don't think he really robbed nobody. But I'm trying to ask him without really asking him, making him feel like I'm all in this business. He told me his auntie hit the lottery or something, just sent him a ticket, sent him a whole bunch of money, man. Like two weeks ago, by bro, the next two weeks, I'm buying my Chris Brown CDs from Joe Dirt. When my phone got knocked off and I went and found another one, Joe Dirt helped me find it. Bro, Joe Dirt came up some type of way. 
I guess off that money his auntie sent him, the money his auntie sent him, he just flipped it and did his thing. But Joe Dirt was the man around there for a minute. I'm talking about even Blackjack was going to Joe Dirt getting stuff from him. Early one morning, about five o'clock in the morning, I was already up. I'm in the TV room. I just hear like scuffling, scuffling with, with, with shoes and stuff like that. I come and look around the thing. Blackjack got Joe Dirt in the headlock. Joe Dirt whole face turning red. There's nobody else woke this early in the morning. I shoot up the steps. I run up there. I'm like, what the hell going on? What the hell going on? So I'm kind of pulling them apart. Blackjack, don't, don't touch me. Let me go. Don't touch me, folks. Don't touch me. That's what he telling me, but I'm not about to just sit here and let you choke this man out. No. I'm able to get Blackjack hands loose up off of him. I push Blackjack back. Joe Dirt is trying to, you got me thug. Man, you got me thug. And he's trying to run like I'm pushing him back. So I got Joe Dirt because he's being more so of the aggressor. Blackjack walking back. So now other people waking up, coming out the room. So when my guys see what's going on, they all come out the room, shoot upstairs. I done snatched Joe Dirt in his room. I'm like, folks, what the hell just happened? It's five o'clock in the morning. He say, Blackjack just came in his room and told him, you a white boy. You better give me a phone and give me a half a can of them Chris Brown CDs or you finna get pulled out and get put on the dope. He talking about you ain't no GD for real. No way you finna get on the dope. So he said he booked. And they ended up out the room arguing, and Blackjack snatched them up in the head like and stuff like that. I make my way down here to Blackjack room, Blackjack telling us that folks just called his phone saying Joe Dirt need to be stripped of everything he got. And when he says stripped, he's not talking about strip him of his clothes. He's talking about take all the property, all the possessions he got, and he need to be put on a dough. Because word just came back through from the other camp that Joe Dirt used to be a crip and this, this, and this. So I asked him, I said, folks, what uh?" What camp called and, and said that? He answered real fast. Hey, hey, stay pretty. Hey, stay pretty. So I'm like, all right, cool. At this moment, I don't personally know nobody at Hayes, but I know people that know people that probably can get a phone number down to Hayes State Prison. These guys is getting ready to come out here, but bro, I just got a bad feeling about it, bro. So I say I'm about to go in my room and try to call the Hayes, but at the same time, I don't want to go in my room. And then they go do something to Joe Dirt. What if Blackjack Line? But what if I go in my room trying to call the Hayes State Prison and then somebody get hurt and then they say, oh, C. Bill ran in the room. He didn't do nothing. So it was a hard situation for me. And I leave out, a few of them come out behind me, but the way they walking, I could tell they finna go to Joe Dirt room and try to do something to them. So I stopped them and I said, hey, listen, folks, I talked to Joe Dirt before I even went down there. He told me something totally different, bro. So they like, man, you know, that big bro. Woo, woo, woo. So we slide down here. Feeling the conviction in my spirit, bro. I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling like we're doing something wrong. I mean, I don't know if Blackjack could just make up something like this, but it's just something there telling me this is wrong. You're not supposed to be doing this. You know what I'm saying? So we get in there. They go to tell him Joe Dirt the business. Joe Dirt like, man, y'all got me fucked up, bro. Y'all got me fucked up. Y'all got me fucked up. I'll beat Blackjack's ass. Man, I'll beat Blackjack's ass. You know what I'm saying? He going in. So... I tell them guys right then and there in front of him. I'm like, bro, just look at how the man is bucking and standing his ground where we know most people will fold and stuff. I don't know, bro. It's just something about Blackjack. I just don't think it's right, bro. You know what I'm saying? Something. It's just something about him I just don't know about, bro. We hear the dope pop. Dope pop. I'm the first one by the door, so I stick my head out the door. It's the guy that's over the entire camp. Blackjack is over this side of the camp, but it's somebody else who's overrides everybody. It's just Blackjack has control over here. It's another guy that has control over there, but then it's a bigger guy that has control over everybody. Like, this is the guy Blackjack I have to report to. So when I stick my head out the door, he look at me, he like, where Blackjack and Joe Dirt at? So I did like this. So he shot up the step. I guess I'm assuming Blackjack called him and then he got out the dorm. He had a detail too. So it's not hard for him to get out the dorm. And then, bro, anybody that has been to Ware State Prison knows the movement is crazy. Like, I can go anywhere. They don't give a damn. I could be in any dorm. I could leave out almost at any time. It's, it's just wide open like that. He come in the room. What the business is, boss? So I'm like, what the business is? You know, I hit him up. He look over at everybody. He holler, he address everybody. Then he look at Joe Dirt. He like, what the business is? What going on? Folks talking about you stealing. He was like, who? So he was like, Blackjack calling me talking about you stealing. What you got going on, boss? So he like, man, he a damn lie. He a damn lie. I ain't stole a damn thing. 
So Blackjack go to, I mean, so Joe Dirt go to explaining that Blackjack was just trying to extort him. So I tell bro right here next to him, I'm like, bro, Blackjack ain't tell us nothing about no damn stealing. He told us bro was a crip at another camp and uh, he, uh, what he said, he ain't GD for real and his folks been extorting his folks, something like that. He ain't told us nothing about no damn still. So he like, what? Man, come in here with me. So we go down there in the room. We leave. He tell Joe Dirk stay in here by himself. We all go in Blackjack room. So he, Blackjack, I guess wasn't expecting bro to actually get up and come over here this early in the morning. So as soon as we walk in the room, he said, you know, his eye got big as saucer. So big bro walk in, he big as hell like the Undertaker with a Rakishi body. Undercover Undertaker height with Rakishi body. He walking around with the business ear, boss. So, you know, Blackjack holler at him, address him and stuff like that. So he's like, so what he stole? He stole my cord. He talking about the damn cord to his phone. He stole my cord, some cheese puffs, a honey bun or two. So bro was like, okay, so why you ain't tell them that? You told them something else. You talking about some Joe Dirt ain't official. Joe Dirt was a crib at another count. Joe Dirt came from Telfair. I been called down there. They say Joe Dirt official. Joe Dirt official from the streets. He was official back in Tennessee. So if you call me telling me they man stealing, but these brothers ask you what's the issue, you told them something totally different. That means you lying to somebody, either to me or to them. So what's really going on? He go to, I'm the closest to the door. I'm like security on the door. So bro, like go get uh, uh, Joe Dirt. So I stick my head out the door. Say it, Joe Dirt. So he stick his head out the door. I'm like, come here. So he come down there. So they start going back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They both start saying stuff like that. So Joe Dirt spazzing out when it's his time to talk. And he tell him he want to fight. He like, man, shoot me a one. Shoot me a one. You know what I'm saying? He's spazzing out like that. Big bro tell him, tell us, like, clear out the room. Let them two shoot a one. So when we're standing outside while they're in there shooting the one, he like, man, blackjack line. Blackjack line, I'm finna let them get this one in. Then his ass finna get on the door. He's over everybody. Can't nobody say nothing back smart, nothing to him. So it's like, hey, that's what you said. And it's so weird because everybody has been under Blackjack's umbrella. And it's like Blackjack really was in here trying to extort the man. And I believe it's because he was white. He was mistreating him because he was white, bro. I'm telling you, I promise you, you got some people like that. In the Georgia prison system that feel like because you're white, you can't be a part of what I am. But really, they can be. I can't tell you you can't be, but it's just a, a feeling, a, a stuck in your way type of thing, I guess, Blackjack had going on. After about a minute, we open the door. You got Blackjack over there in the corner, <sighs> bent over all that, bleeding all out the mouth. Joe Dirt standing over here by the toilet. Come on, come on, come on, don't be a bitch. Don't be a fucking Big bro told him, step out. Man, I looked at Joe Dirt. Joe Dirt didn't have a scratch on his face, bro. Blackjack, blacker than me. His ass black now. Mouth busted all out. So I know black, uh, Joe Dirt had to whoop his ass. And bro came back in the room. He told bro about himself. He told him the business. Bro got violated. He got his ass whooped again. So this is the second ass whooping. But this time it was by more than one person. He got his ass whooped again. They got all his property packed up, and then he had to get on the door. He had to go to the hole, and he had to stay in the hole until he go home. Blackjack had two years left at that time. I had six months left, so I've been out 10 months, so that's 16 months. So Blackjack got eight more months in the hole before he goes home. They not letting him back out. And, you know, that's why I stress so much about the whole gang culture thing, because it's like, bro... It's so dangerous. You got to think, whoever has all the position, they're a human just like me and you. They just got a whole lot of position and their word is trusted, whatever is meant. So what if Big Bro wouldn't have answered the phone? Them guys would have went in there and did something to Joe Dirt, put him on the door, stabbed him, beat him up, whatever the case is, and come find out. Blackjack was lying. It's not worth it, bro. I'd rather walk around here solo dolo doing me, not worried about... You know, nobody feeling like I'm obligated to them or I'm obligated to this and that. You know what I'm saying? Like, brother, it's lame. It's not worth it, bro. It's not worth it. It's your boy Bill. I'm gone. <laughs>